So you finally hit level 40 in Season of Discovery, or at least you're going to be doing so relatively soon. As with all of these new level caps, there is going to be new end game content to look forward to. Today I'll be covering the main things to do during this level bracket, as well as covering a few extra things that may be worth it for you. So first is gonna be regarding gold. Now this sounds like the most obvious thing ever, because of course you need to farm gold in vanilla, but compared to phase 1, phase 2 has way heavier heavier gold sinks attached to it. I thought it being a seasonal server, things would be kind of tuned down to allow it to be super easy to get everything, but there are definitely going to be a few chase items or objectives for most players. Anyways, if you remember from phase 1, the cost of mounts was showing as 40 gold, assuming you had rank 3 and honoured with the faction you were buying from. This would give you a total of a 20% discount. But in phase 2, Blizzard have increased the cost to match how it was in vanilla, so once again your Mount will be setting you back 80 gold minimum. Or you can just play a Warlock or a Paladin and get your mount for free, which is pretty nice. If you are planning to play a character as a main though, I always think prioritizing the mount is a good idea and it's worth investing into sooner rather than later because it just makes everything else you do in the game faster from farming, PvP, questing, whatever it is. And you're going to need a mount eventually, whatever happens. There are also a number of new crafting schematics and recipes associated with no Gun, which I'll talk about soon and they're all 15 to 25 gold each as well. And then there's new spell ranks, enchants, consumables, leveling professions, maybe even getting summoning taxis across the world and so on. For me, similar to phase 1, questing past a level cap still feels very worth doing, with quests averaging just above 2 gold to 4 gold for some elise. Note that this is pretty much guaranteed to put you in a position where you're going to have to dungeon grind for at least a few levels at the start of next phase, but having seen the new ways to get XP in phase 2 that were added, I'll just take the bonus gold now and I'll grind some levels out later. Gold will also depend of course on how much time you can invest into the game too. In vanilla it's not uncommon at all for players to have an alt just to farm gold to support their main. This is especially the case when your main is running two crafting professions for PvP or PvE and isn't all that great at farming themselves or questing post level cap. Typically gold farm alts are usually always made for AoE farms or selling portals, food and water, but Hunter has gained a bunch of value too because they can easily solo mobs which are way higher level than them in these new phases. And if Blizzard are already putting some heavy gold sinks into phase 2, this may just be the approach they take moving forwards. So all in all, have a plan on how to get gold. Whether you prefer gathering, farming mobs, flipping items on the auction house, questing, whatever it is, because gold matters once again. Next is getting your Azeroth commerce authority or Jorotart supply and logistics rep to revered, but just don't worry about rushing it. Currently in phase 2 there is just one reward for revered which is a new craftable consumable that gives some spell power, but one day this reputation will surely be extended to exalted and should have some better rewards at that point in time. So I would work on this getting to revered as you progress this phase, but just not as a high priority. And it will of course depend on your server, but for me some supply boxes are quite cheap to fill such as rock scale cod or crimson silk pantaloons and other ones like massive iron axes or mithril blunderbusses are still upwards of 8 gold for me. I wouldn't go as far to straight up delete bad supply crates but as time goes on prices should start to come down and they'll become more worth handing in. And we have just had an update on this as Blizzard say they're planning to add more rewards to revered very soon. It's just there's been a delay because they are a bit unique to original WoW in their own words but we'll see what they end up being. In any event, if you're already revered, keep an eye out for the updates, and for the rest of us, it may just be time to start working towards it. Next is a quick mention to the cozy sleeping bag quest, in case you didn't get it done between 25 and 40. Whilst this would have been very useful during the leveling portion of phase 2, I don't see any reason why it won't be usable, and who knows, maybe even upgradable next phase. When rested in for 3 minutes, you'll gain 3% bonus experience 
to all activities for two hours, which is going to add up to a fairly good time saver between levels 40 and 60 due to the sheer volume of XP needed to level up. It's worth a note too, you also get eight student fodder from doing this quest as well. Each of these give a bunch of rested XP instantly. Now, I don't know if these will be usable in phase three. I have a feeling that Blizzard are going to nerf them somehow, but either way, if you've done this quest post level cap, put them in your bank and maybe you do get lucky and can use them next phase. As mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of new craftable profession items behind a pretty enormous quest chain that starts in Nomragan. While I definitely won't have time to cover the whole thing here, starting it can be a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to go through that real quick. So during a Noma run, make sure you get a grime encrusted salvage, or buy one as they are tradable. You turn this in at the Salvagematic 9000 in the clean zone, and a new quest will pop up from the nearby gnome, Ziri the Wrench. After picking this up, go do the tech bot quest outside the instance and loot a corroded G7 core processor. Go back to Ziri, go through the dialogue options, and then you'll be able to talk to Scooty and Booty Bay about finding somebody to fix this item. From there on out, the rest of the quest needs a ton of traveling, but it's pretty straightforward. The rewards from this are pretty huge in the end though, albeit expensive to craft and to learn. These include new enchants, new items for tailoring, leatherworking, blacksmithing, all the new helms and so much more. I'd definitely say consider getting this done on at least your main, but this is going to be really expensive to do on multiple alts, but again, that's up to you. PvP is also a big part of phase two, and there are several different parts to it. First up is the fact the Ashenvale weekly quest still exists and still gives 1000 rep just for looting the quest item from an enemy faction NPC. It may be worth carrying on doing this to Exalted due to how low the time investment is, but if you're still early in to revered and this is the only way you intend to get reputation phase three is probably going to be out before you're exalted because past revered the mini bosses and boss will no longer give rep anymore still warsaw gulch has a lot of solid reputation rewards that scale up with levels all the way from 28 to 58 so getting at least revered is not a bad option and you can get up to revered by doing the regular mini bosses and bosses during the event too the epic rewards at Exalted have different versions too, and you can get upgraded versions of the braces at levels 50 and 60, and then 60 will also have an epic pair of legs. A Rathi Basin is also in the game, but there isn't a super easy way to grind the reputation at the moment as there was with Warsong Gulch. You can buy one lumber supply for one silver blood coin from the vendor at Gurubashi Arena. Each of these are worth 200 reputation, and if you're in a solid group and fighting around the boss in STV, you should be able to net 10 or so silver coins per event, which means 30 minutes work for 2k rep. I mean, it's nowhere near as fast as Warsong Gulch rep was, but it's also much faster than playing Arathi Basin. Pre-mading Arathi Basin during the holiday weekend should still be a good way to get rep as at least a five player group. Then again, the Arathi Basin rewards aren't on par with how good the Warsong Gulch ones are, so I think you just mainly do this if you enjoy the PvP. There is also Stranglethorn Vale, of course, which rewards a good bunch of items. I had to look for a group prior to the event starting and always fight around the Blood Lower boss as much as you can as you'll get way more coins. Even if you aren't much of a PvPer, I would recommend doing this because you'll be done after about 3 to 5 events, depending on how many items you want to buy. You can PvE the event as well, as NPCs also drop one blood whilst it's on. Again, find a group for this and just farm for 30 minutes, going back to the altar when your blood's capped. It's not going to be anywhere near as fast as just PvPing, but this is an alternative if you want to do that. There are also a few quests in the game now which give pretty iconic rewards if you're really looking to finish everything up in phase two. Nifty Stopwatch is an unused trinket that gives you a mini sprint type effect and is available from a quest chain in the Badlands, which both needs a few crafted items as well as for you to farm a bunch of different rock elementals, including those ones next to the quest giver, which have had a terrible respawn rate since forever and unfortunately continue to do so. Skull of Impending Doom is another fun and iconic classic item. It also starts from a quest chain in the Badlands called Solution to Doom, but it will have you going across the entire world to defeat several specific elite enemies. Both of these are typically more powerful in PvP, but they are some pretty high level quest chains too, and they'll give you some nice gold as a reward as well. You can also prepare a lot of dungeon quests at the moment too, but I'd check out pre-questing you can do now for both 
both the sunken temple and alderman. It would take a pretty extreme amount of explaining with everything you need to do, so I'm going to link some relevant pages below in the description or comments. It's kind of interesting that prequests are open for sunken temple at the moment. All the existing dungeons that were made into raids have had their dungeon quests updated to a raid status so that we can complete them. I remember going to look in Orgrimmar for the quest to activate the teleporter to Nomragun in phase 1 and it just wasn't in the game whatsoever. And I believe there's even a quest for Maradon which you can pick up now too. Really makes you wonder which dungeon they're going to be upgrading next phase doesn't it? Moving on though, of course Nomragun is the new raid and it's been very interesting actually. The first three bosses are kind of free as long as you don't mess the mechanics up too much, but the last three bosses there is quite a difficulty step up actually. These fights will test out your raid's ability to do mechanics to a larger extent though, but I think as time goes on we should really begin to gear up this phase and that will make both of them a lot easier. The last two fights also heavily encourage your tanks to pop on some more defensive gear or runes as they can start to hit really hard which I kind of like as well. It makes tanking more than just a threat generating DPS. Another thing I liked about Nomragun was funnily enough the trash actually had a decent amount of health. Trash in BFD was pretty terrible to be honest. You just kind of ran through it in a straight line with anyone tanking everything until those mobs in the hallways would just chain frost over you and you're standing there for 15 seconds wishing you could play the game. I'm not after an hour of trash per raid or anything but something where you can actually do your AoE damage and have it matter felt good to do. And from here on out when this video is released, Nomragun's going to be on a 3 day reset too, so everyone will have plenty of chances to see the content and gear up. Let's finish up on the obvious bits that everyone's going to want to get done. So first of all, finish your runes. For the remainder of phase 2 there's been a bunch added, and even if every rune isn't the most exciting, maybe one of them becomes meta in the future, so just try and get them all done. Unfortunately, they didn't change how you get the ratchet rune from Grisby in phase 1. I was kind of hoping they would in some way because I have so many alts, but yeah, they haven't. So if you are waiting for a possible change there, doesn't look like it's happening and you should just go and farm it out via the shredders. Get your quality of life spellbooks in this phase too. Stuff like summoning portal, a normal res for druids, totemic projection, and so on. These pretty much all drop from the various bosses in Scarlet Monastery, with it appearing as though bosses in Scarlet Monastery grave yard have the best chance to drop them. You should also cap out your professions and your secondaries as well because hey, why not? Who knows when they'll come in. Also, we didn't end up getting profession specializations this phase, but we know for sure they are coming in phase 3. In fact, I could see us staying at 225 skill next phase because if we were to go all the way to 300, there are tons of items at 290 skill and above, which we just wouldn't be able to equip at level 50. Maybe in phase 3, every profession profession in the game gets a specialization, because a few of them are missing them at the moment, such as alchemy or enchanting. Alchemy could get potion, transmute and flask specs as they did in TBC, and for enchanting perhaps they could spec into making weapons, oils, or just reducing the materials needed for enchantments. On top of that, Blizzard did say in one of the interviews before phase 2 that they liked the idea of gathering professions having some bonuses too. So yeah, level your professions up. They've been a big deal in Season of Discovery so far, and I'm sure they will continue to be so. And that's it, that's the bulk of the content at level 40. There should be enough there to keep you busy. Either way, let me know how you're liking the phase so far, what your thoughts on it are, and if you want to stay up to date with Season of Discovery content, do drop a sub on the channel, as I'll be breaking down and covering all major news right here. And finally, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.